the reason why I wrote this review about in vivo injectable gels for tissue repair is that there's a general trend in healthcare today to minimize cost and to lower the rate of infection. And you can think of that you can go in, instead of doing an open surgery, you can go in with needles and endoscopes and actually perform what you want to do inside the body through a minimal invasive hole. And this also reduces the pain for the patient. And I'd like to take an example from our own research where we inject materials that produces bone. So if you have a defect inside your body that requires replacement of new bone, what you often do is you open up the site with surgery, you place something there, it could be part of your own bone from another site of the body or some synthetic materials that triggers bone formation. Instead of doing this, you simply place the bone pieces in the right position after the fracture without open surgery, and then you inject your gel that will trigger bone formation at that site that increase the rate of healing uh, significantly. The challenges with this approach is that there are twofold. One is that you want to place the material in the right position. It's difficult to locate with the syringe when you don't see the inside of the body and often, most often these materials are transparent. The second challenge is that you want a specific tissue response, as in our case we wanted bone formation, and while in other cases you want some other tissues to be formed and not scar or inflammatory response. The review highlights a lot the liquid to gel transition, that is, when you have things in your syringe, it's a liquid, so you will be able to inject it inside the body, but then it should solidify to a gel. So there are either, there are some ways of doing this, that either you can have a liquid that reacts inside your body, or it can be triggered by body temperature, so it solidifies, or you can actually have, in fact, a weak gel in the syringe, and crush this gel and let it go inside the body. Other parts in the review highlights the importance of carrying specific factors into the body. These could be growth factors that can be admixed, mixed into the gel simply or bound to the gel in various ways to be released upon body reactions, for instance, cells that would migrate into the gel and then release the growth factor. The conclusion is that we are going from random trials of making materials to a more rational design of materials that can fulfill the needs of injectable materials for tissue regeneration.